Coaches today have a special treat for you. Coach Knapp from West Virginia is coming in, teaching advanced quick game. Do not finalize your playbook before you watch this. <laughs> So excited. I know I've been telling you guys all about Coach Knapp's uh, advanced quick game, um, and he's going to come on and tell us all about it. How you doing, Coach? Doing great, man. Just trying to stay safe. Hope you're staying safe out there. Oh, man. Yes, sir. And everything <laughs> is changing by the by the second out here. So, um, yep, staying safe and and uh, trying to get back to, to some type of normalcy. We're actually going to take six kids out tonight and, and throw the ball around a little bit. Mm. So it's going to be the first time in a while. Um, yeah. So great. And uh, so if in case anybody for some weird reason doesn't know who you are, maybe you can just fill them in on, on your background. Yeah, absolutely, man. My name's uh, Chris Knapper. I'm from Huntington, West Virginia, you know, known as Marshall University, that area. Randy Moss and Chad Pennington grew up here. Nice. Nice. Um, coached middle school, high school. I've also coached arena football and I had a short stint in college football where I learned the air raid offense from uh, Matt Mummy, who is Hal Mummy's son. He was the head coach there, ran running backs for him, uh, really got a deeper dive into the air raid at that place, you know, kind of behind the scenes stuff. Uh, what a quarterback's looking for. We're going to talk about that today. But just a great experience. You know, I know coaches asked me in the past, did you play youth football, middle school football? Absolutely. Um, got a lot of positive mail leadership experience from that you know you know i mean i have a dad who's a great guy and everything but you can't have too many positive males in your life i think you know me and coach have joked before you know football probably kept me out of prison i know it did <laughs> but you know because i was aggressive and stuff but um just a great sport teaches you adversity how to conquer it and uh, to hopefully today we can cover some quick game stuff absolutely and you know to your point about youth football i mean it, it, you know that that preteen age you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, sixth through eighth grade, especially, you know, we're, we're trying to flex a little bit, right. On our parents, we're trying to flex on authority a little bit. And I was the same way. And, and I, I truly believe when I, when I figured out that there actually was tackle football leagues out here, it totally changed my perspective and, and actually just, just made me focus on other stuff. Right. So Absolutely. Um, big time. And it's just such an important sport because of that. And I'm so glad that, uh, that it continues to thrive and hopefully we can, we can help get these participation numbers back to where we want them. So thanks for sharing that. Well, I know, um, Joe, I know Joe South has said this, but man, you are so important to getting this to middle school and, and youth league because in order for us to get these numbers back up, we've got to start throwing the ball, you know, guys like Joe and Drew Piscopo and George Coltharp and Shane Dular, we've thrown for years and years. We've always had high participation, high turnarounds. We've taken teams that are, 0 and 10, 1 and 9, and have made runs with them, made playoffs and stuff um, because of the details. But the kids like to play this type of football, you know, and, and I hate to say this, it just is what it is. You know, we got some of these mommies that don't want kids, you know, I've seen the movie, I hear that all the time. I've seen the movie where you beat their head in, you know. Oh this is a way to get them back into that, you know. Coach, you know this, when we played, it was three yards in a cloud of dust, and uh, I finally – got lucky and got with a coach who we were I formation and, and two backs, but, you know, had three wide receivers and I got to play for him. And I said, man, if I ever, ever get to coach football, I'm going to do this air raid stuff. So, uh, you know, I think coach, I, I mean, hats off to you, man. I think you're a big part of this air raid change. Well, I appreciate that. I really, I, I laugh every time I hear that from you or, or Salas because it, <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to spread the love just like you guys, man. I, I, I stumbled upon all you guys when I started my, journey looking into, I mean, I wasn't looking for air raid in particular, just wanted to figure out how to best spread the ball around. I have, we have all this talent and number one, spread the ball around, but number two, you know, make kids want to choose football again. And so, you know, I'm glad that, uh, the guys like you are able to put this information out there It help, it helped me. And, you know, I just feel like I just had to, had to do something to just at least make it easier for coaches that want to learn. Like not all of us were lucky like you to, and, got to play for an air raid coach. I've only played for really running teams. I mean, I played at uh, University of Nevada and they ran sort of a run and shoot type of offense back in the mid nineties, a lot of really huge numbers. Um, but uh, I was only in there for a few years, got injured and I was out. So I didn't really stay in there long enough to really learn it. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of us just only played youth uh, or maybe a little bit um, after high school and and we just know the running game stuff. So this is just more about 
giving coaches the option if they want to learn how to spread the ball around. Hopefully they understand what our point about participation numbers and how passing the ball will help that. And so once they kind of get that in their mind, we can just say, hey, here's a way you can implement it. You yourself, youth coach, or if a high school coach like Salas is talking about wants their youth team to, to be running this so that kids are more prepared when they get to high school, um, just give them that option. So I appreciate the kind of words, coach, but it's more about just helping helping football stay stay healthy, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So there's a couple air raid questions that all of my youth coaches and middle school coaches are asking me to ask guys like you, coach, uh, the guys that have been running air raid for years and years. And they're, always, you know, I think for the most part, people understand, you know, what we're trying to accomplish in the air raid um, and, and, and what, what the overall picture is, you know, throw the ball short to, to your playmakers and then throw it long to the same guys after they start trying to take that away. Um, but there's a few little things that every air raid coach tends to do differently. Um, so I'd love to just at, rattle off a few questions for you before we get into advanced quick game, if that's okay. Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay, cool. Uh, swing <laughs> or shoot for your running backs? Uh, it depends on the back I have. Um, love that for, answer. I, I mean, I know this is going to sound crazy. It's kind of like a three-part answer. Uh, the first part of it is, is what does he catch the best? You know, I've had kids that struggle catching shoot routes because their back is turned towards the quarterback. Yep. Um, I've had kids that are awesome at catching it and struggle for some reason struggle at catching swings. Uh, but the second part of that, this is the more technical part, is is he a bigger back or is he an athletic back? You know, is he good in space? Because to me, if he's really good in space, I want him to run a swing so he's further away from the linebackers because he can make a miss in space. Mm. If he's a bruiser, I want him to run a shoot because he's going to catch it on his shoulder and tight turn and truck that guy. So, you know, right. he's more like throw him off. Obviously, we can do some different stuff depending on the concept. You know, we run both. We rep both. You no. have to have – I coach running backs for Coach Matt Mummy, okay, so I know this. You have to rep both of those routes and the angle route. That's one that everybody forgets about. And the check down. you got to rep those routes throughout the week, every day on cones, on air. Once they run their routes, once they go through their techniques, have them practice scoring and finish the drill violently. I tell them to finish everything with a rip. So I want them to pretend like they're about to get tackled, throw their forearm up, and you'll start seeing it on film during games and in practice. Right when somebody's getting ready to hit them, they'll, whoop, they'll throw that arm up, and it'll get two or three extra yards. Um, another thing that the last part about what route you want them to run, once you get to the high school level or the college level, you can start changing routes on concepts depending on how the defense plays. Like if everything's equal, right, because there's really good defensive players in college too, and you got really good offensive players. We watch to see what kind of defense they're playing. Are they a, a man team that runs straight to the swing? Because if that if that's the case, mm -hmm. you're probably not going to want to run a swing route, you know, because they're going to get on it quicker, right? You probably want to run a shoot. That way you're stretching that backer out and you can throw something behind him. And then likewise, if they're running a zone concept, so they're slightly dropping, that's where you're going to run your swing so you can make space and you get more separation from the linebacker. Mm. So in short, I know a lot of people don't go that much detail, but it's really like a three-step process and just try to fit it into your kids. No, I love that. And at, at our level, right, the kids maybe can't tell from a running back perspective if if they're getting manned up or or if they're, you know, the guy's just getting out there to a zone or whatnot. But as coaches, we can. And I love right. that idea of making so we only did swing last year i repped it a few times and like you said it just was awkward for our running backs to catch over that outside shoulder so i scrapped it quick i just wanted to keep it simple my first year um but i love the idea of repping both because you should be i mean it's a route and these kids need to learn how to catch it and then you know maybe as you as a coach maybe dictating per game which one we're doing i, I really like that idea because you know their defense you know is tendency to play man versus zone or something. So that's really great. That's here, great knowledge. Here's the trick to teaching young kids how to tell if it's man or zone, all right? Because I had to teach 21-year-olds this. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what you have to teach them is when the quarterback says hike and the play's in, you know, you check release for pass pro, whatever, are the DBs and the linebackers, are they looking at my receivers mm -hmm. or are they looking at the quarterback? Oh, you're a genius. And yeah. if you can teach them that, you know, especially if you play in the F, you know, some people go into blue and green, which has two backs, but let's just talk about the F by itself right now. You know, if he's on that right-hand side, which he usually is, 
the guy over Y will usually tell him what it is. Same thing with Pass Pro. You know, I'm checking inside out on Pass Pro. Is my guy even paying attention to me? Is he dropping back? Now I know it's zone. I need to swing it. If my man's looking at me intensely and he's not really blitzing, but he's kind of like, you know, waiting on me and staring at me, I know it's man or he's in some type of man concept. I need to shoot it. So, mm-hmm. you, can, you know, you can do it both ways. Um, but just a just a little nugget there to teach him how if it's man or zone from a running back perspective. That's a huge nugget, Coach. Thank you for that. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So uh, next one, backside a quick game. Do you do you do anything on all your quick games backside that are the same or like we do two double stick? Some people do double slant. What do you guys what do you guys do? Uh, we do. It depends on the concept. Our two high, which we're going to talk about this in a minute, but our two high beaters are double slants. So I think those are huge. And then on our one high concepts, we actually mirror those. And the reason I did that at this level was because it was just easier for the middle school kids. Um, but if I'm doing high school, it would all be double slants on the backside. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Makes sense. Um, run plays. What, what, what's your, what's your, what do you have? Three run plays? I do three run plays. Um, the easiest way to do it is you can have a, uh, an ISO scheme out of two backs. So that way it's the same assignments as the pass pro. If you do the air raid, big on big numbering mm-hmm. system. Mm-hmm. And I, don't, I mean, we can do another video coach and we can talk about that. Um, but we also do the dart. Okay, why? Because dart is just single back ISO. You can, yeah. do, you can do it that way. And then I think in the air raid, you either have to have a draw or a dive if you get a five-man box. Um, you know, middle school, you're probably not going to get a five-man box. You go to high school or college, you're going to get a five-man box. So, you know, they're more likely to drop eight on you. So I think, you know, you got to have that dive. Plus, it's just a good physical play to have. Um, yeah. In the past, I've done inside zone, outside zone. We've ranked count. We've tried everything. Here's the key. Keep it to three and keep it simple. Don't try to be the jack of all trades. Be the master yeah. of one. And, and you know, have you an inside run, an outside run, and then whatever your best run is off of that, and you'll be fine. Perfect. Love it. Uh, how many – and I don't know if you guys are quantifying this to a number. We're, we're so – we have such few plays that I can. Do you? Can you quantify how many plays you have in your playbook? In my playbook? Yeah. We, uh, hold on. Let me think here. And I'm, not, I'm more, I guess concept is more what I'm asking. Like we don't concept. count like stick left and right. Just, that's just one for me. That's just. Right. Stick. So we have, we have four, uh, we have four quick game concepts, which we'll see those today. Mm-hmm. And then drop back. We carry six, 92, uh, 93, which is H wheel, which I would not run in middle school. Cause that's a hard concept that uh, we run 94, 95 and shallow. So we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have 10 concepts. So you guys, I'm telling you, and that's been the, the, the most pushback I get is about that. Like, well, how can you only run 11 plays? The guy, you don't, I don't even have time to call all 11 of those plays in the game. Like, no. I don't. And, and our clock is shorter than your high school clock. We're like 10-minute quarters, and half the time the clock is running. And we're just like, oh, my gosh, I don't have well, time. So it's so know, important. Scripting, scripting goes into that. Which is another video we can do if you want. <laughs> scripting goes into I, need, that. I need that video from you, buddy. Uh, scripting is a, is a big way. You want to keep you organized in practice and calm play, especially for your quarterback. And you're going to see a little bit of that today on the wristband when we're talking about um, the quarterback stuff. But I also think that I don't know how you have time to run 50 plays. You know, we only run 25, and this is mul- the same concept multiple times with motions and formation. We only have 25 plays in the open script nine plays in the red zone and five in the goal line. That's a game. You know what I mean? We have some screens, uh, but they're sprinkled into the open script and the red zone script. But we have screens sprinkled in. We have, uh, you know, third and long script and third and short, third and short script. But, you know, I don't I don't know how these guys come in with these big Denny menu. You know, it looks like a Denny <laughs> menu, you know, the restaurant menu. I don't know how you do all that. In the NFL, I get it. You know, those guys have – Tons oh, of time. Yeah. I mean, you're just talking about a total different beast. But high school level, I just don't. I don't see how you, you know, especially middle school and youth league. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. No. And that's. I mean, that's just such a huge point for us. We're trying to teach this the right way. And small playbook. Don't. It's not a. It's not a disgraceful badge or anything. Like it's actually a badge of honor that you have that kind of discipline. To right. be honest. Think, think about. And I know this is air raid today, but the two offenses that I I really really respect or like split back beer teams or just any type of option team, really. Yeah. Uh, especially split back beer. And you also have wing T teams. Those teams are good because they have small playbooks. 
and they just rep the snot out of what they do and they get really good at it. And, you know, I know Leach is, Mike Leach has talked about this. He said, you know, we're, we're closer to a wishbone offense than most offenses are because we just, we don't think about run pass ratio. We think about touches, who's yep. touching the football. You know, you, we say, Oh, I'm a spread team. You got to defend the whole field. Well, if you're not throwing to your outside receivers, you don't have to defend the whole field. <laughs> If they're in a seven or eight man box and they're not guarding your slot receivers and you're not throwing to them, they're not defending the whole field. You just got guys out there wasting time. Yep. You know? So you got to you got to align for a purpose. And I think this quick game today that we're going to cover is going to show you a simple way without even having to throw screens, a simple way to attack the entire part of the field. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, uh, last one. Favorite red zone play. Give these guys some money. Ninety two mesh. Oh, is that right? <laughs> mesh is your favorite, huh? Mesh is my favorite, man. Absolutely. It's got all the answers. It. I love it. I love it. Okay, cool. All right, awesome. Well, I won't uh, hold back these guys from from consuming this air, this uh, advanced uh, quick game. I, I've been pubbing this since. I mean, I think I even talked about it in my in my initial series that I that kind of got me started on this journey a month or so ago. I, I'm pretty sure I referenced it while <laughs> while I was just creating those initial videos because I absolutely love. The way you run your quick game, um, I you have coached at the middle school level, so this isn't just theory from a high school coach that's done it well. That's saying, oh, you know, that's these youth guys can do it. Just, just, just tell them to do it. Like it's not that you've done it, you've put it to action. Um, your receiver work is second to none. I, I, and I've told these guys that and I'm going to put the link below um, to not only this advanced quick game um in in coach two but also your your wide receiver videos because i just send my coaches your receiver video so i can just know hey wide receiver coach watch this a few times then meet me on the field and we'll we'll start talking um so i've been pubbing your stuff your quick game and your receivers uh videos forever i'm so excited and i'll stop talking and blabbing but i i'm so excited to to be able to show my audience your advanced quick game because i i've said it to other people i said it to you before we started if i had seen this before i started my journey um it would have been really hard for me not to just do it your way and just and just go all in with it so without further ado i'm gonna let you take the screen and uh tell these guys show these guys exactly how uh how a high level high school coach would did execute this at the middle school level and uh, and just give them another option. Like you've seen how I do quick game. You've seen my Cardwick's quick game. Uh, now you're going to see how Coach Knapp does it. So go ahead, Coach Knapp, take it away. Okay, guys. And uh, we did this quick game clinic for the 92 Mesh group, which is up here on the left. George Coltharp, great guy. If you have a chance, you know, get the Coach 2 video because it's not just me on there. You have Joe Salas, Shane Dular, Drew Piscopo. Those are all guys that you want to follow on Twitter. Uh, Drew Piscopo is amazing. He's, he probably knows the area better than anybody I've ever met. Uh, wow. So that's where we get our 92 mesh group thing right here. Uh, then you got a picture of me up there in the corner with my two kids. I'm a big family man first. You know, I've got sons, and we just talked about that, about how important it is. And I coach my players like I would my own kids. Okay. And, yes, I have grown my hair out since that picture. <laughs> <laughs> but there's my there's my Twitter account, man. If you guys want to give me a follow or a shout, I'll try my best to get a hold of y'all. But uh, let's go into the quick game. Uh, coach, hit these real fast. Uh, and the man, the myth, the legend, Coach Hal Mummy, uh, he's the guy that created the air raid. You guys all know that. His five rules of the air raid are this. You know, you throw short to people who can score. That's rule number one, and that's what we're going to cover today. Once they take away that, we're going to throw the ball deep to those same people. You'll see some of that today. And then once they take away the second one, we need to run the ball to numbers because they have vacated the box. And what's good about that is you're going to see that today too. Uh, the, the secret hidden rules of the air raid, four and five, is about scripting practice and the games because you're going to play the game before the game. Don't waste time in practice on drills you're not going to use in a game. Okay, They need to be play and game oriented. And then the last one, this is the biggest advice I can give you, no matter what system you coach, wing tee, split back, I, I don't care. Don't get bored with success, which is really the details. Okay, mm. You're going to do a lot of repeating saying the same thing over and over and over. But it's those little details and those little keys that are going to help you be a good coach. I can draw any play up on the board, and I'm undefeated. But my kids have got to go on the field and do it, okay? So why the air raid quick game? It answers all the questions. 
I hear a lot of negative things, and I'm sure Coach <laughs> does too at the, at the youth league level about, you know, well, yeah, we can't, you know, I've heard these before. My O-line isn't good enough to throw the ball 30 times a game. Uh, what, what if the defense starts blitzing, right? I don't run a 10, 20 personnel offense. I, I don't need quick game. I have RPOs. Mm-hmm. I, hear, I hear that one a lot, okay? And I, I just want to say this. I'm not anti-RPO, but the rules of high school and middle school football are changing. They're watching for that stuff. I also think RPOs are very time invested, okay? And then a lot of people play cover one on you, and your RPOs are pretty much null. All right, mm-hmm. so we want to think about, I'm not, like I said, I'm not knocking RPOs. I'm j- I just don't run them personally, okay? Uh, I, I heard this one all the time. My QB is not good enough to throw it down the field, okay? And how do you throw it at younger levels, which is the one we're going to answer today. All right, it's effective with all kinds of skill sets. Uh, me and my, my boy Drew Piscopo, we, we always say you have two types of air raid quarterbacks, and it's basically the truth for every quarterback in high school or middle school or youth league. You've got the, the gunslinger, which would be my boy there on the right, Texas Tech, B.J., um, you know, he was a gunslinger. He took chances. He had a big arm. He threw it around. Uh, and then you had Tim Couch, you know, great arm, first-round draft pick, not pretending like he had a bad arm, but he was more of a, a methodical, savant kind of guy, really handled the offense well. So you got two different types of guys there that run it. It's effective at all levels. I don't have to introduce who the guy on the left is, okay? He won a Super Bowl doing this stuff. Um, but, you know, he's a great athlete. He can run around. He can sling it. Probably one of the best quarterbacks I've ever seen in my life, especially with how young he is. Now, the guy on the right, probably don't know who that is. His name is Dalton Caldwell. That was my middle school quarterback at Buffalo Middle School in West Virginia. Okay, he was a seventh grader. All right, Dalton ended up throwing for 2,000 yards. Woo. And he most of these yards, this came in eight, eight games, by the way, most of these yards came off a quick game. And I let him call the plays. And you'll see how we do that, okay? We didn't run a lot of concepts, but we got daggone good at him. And I want to brag on my O-line for middle school. If you notice, nobody's near him right now, and he's throwing the football. Love okay? it. What does that help you do? Quick game doesn't make your offensive line block very long. All you got to do is get ran over slowly. All right? And Dalton had never played quarterback before. He was a great athlete. Uh, you know, he, was, he wasn't a freak by any means. He was under six foot tall. He's just a typical seventh-grade kid. But he worked hard, and he believed in what we did. And you can run this at any level. Okay, so O line protection and the quick game, uh, our quick game protection is the same as our drop back assignment. So we're not teaching two different drop backs. Okay, the only thing that changes <clears throat> is the depth of the vertical set. All right, and if you didn't get to watch Shane Dular's clinic on the O line technique, you missed out and you need to get that thing. Okay, well, I don't plug a lot of people, but Coach Dular's is like the offensive line Bible. Okay, you need to get it. And, Coach, you can tell him, am I lying? It was a good one. No, sir. That I mean, I brought him on just to talk about it, but we didn't go over everything. So I'm going to put that link as well in here. So if you didn't get it, 92 Mesh Group is going to have that as well on Coach Tube, 100%. It's awesome. Absolutely. Shane stuff is great. So And, he, and you can get the techniques on that. Um, when I was – this is not how I do it now, but when I was at the middle school, I had to simplify the pass pro, okay? So I broke it down to even man fronts, and Oki man fronts, okay? So three man fronts and odd fronts, and then even man would be four man, okay? The center would alert the guard away from the F, all right? So if the F was on the right, he'd come up, Roger, Roger. That told the center he had to work to the backer away from the right, okay? And then if it was Oki call, he had to alert the guard to work with him towards the F. So the back came up, said, Roger, Roger. He would tell the back on the right, or the guard on the right, hey, you got to work with me to this backer, hmm. all right? How does that look on paper? Like this. Okay, so we got an even call. That's a 4 2. All right, so the uh, center would have zero. So my back came up, made a right or left call, Roger Louie, Ram line, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. Rocket laser, I've heard a thousand different things. You just got to have RL in. So the F says Roger, Roger. The center then knows he's telling that left guard, hey, number zero, he points at him, whatever number he is, 52, 52 is the mic. Okay, so now the left guard and the center know they're working towards the zero. All right, guards have one, tackles have two. They just go zero, one, two, three. If you can count to three in the air age, you can, you can play offensive line. All right, so the back would have the three. If we're free release in the back, the quarterback would have three, if that makes any sense to everybody, okay? So they're doing their vertical set. Now, I always get asked this question at a youth and middle school level. Well, what if 
the two comes inside and the zero loops all the way around with the zero still. No, you're a man until you bump. What that means is I still have that man until I bump hips with my buddy. Once I bump hips with my buddy, I take his man and he goes chase my man. You know, and yes, you do have to do blitz pickup in order to get good at this. But if you wrap it for 10 minutes a day, you can do it. And like I said, Coach Dular did a great job. Uh, Coach Coltharp has great stuff on it. Coach Piscopo and Coach Salas. You know, there's all kinds of iterative information on there that you can find on how to do this. Now, how what happened? You know, you get a four three, which a lot of you guys will. Uh, so you got two number threes. If they're wanting to live in that world, you got to bring another back in, right? So I'd have to bring my H in. He's got the back, the number three on the left, but it's the same concept. Oaky fronts, okay, three three stack. I know I saw this a lot in middle school. For some reason, this is what I saw the most. I don't see it a lot in high school, but I did in middle school. Hmm. Okay. So, you know, we got an Oki front. So the back would say Roger, Roger. Okay. So that center is now telling the guard on his right, you know, towards the back, Hey, we're working to the, working to the mic up there. Okay. So you can see center still has zero guards have one tackles have two. And then my back or my quarterback, depending on the concept would have number three, same concepts on man until you bump. This is the front that you want to work the most on with twist and stunts because these dudes right here in this front do not stay there. They're in that front to move. Okay. Mm. So work those twists and stunts with your O-line. The key is it's vertical setting and getting ran over slowly. Sure. Right, now this is the three, four for you guys. It might be more like a five, two look. Yeah. Okay. So zeros, ones, twos, and threes, same concept, man until you bump. Uh, you probably see that a lot, Coach, like a 5-1. That's all I see. That's all I see. Yeah, that's how we would handle it right there. You know, you and have so to. The running back gets the three. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Okay. Unless he's free releasing. If he's free releasing, then the quarterback's got to throw him hot. Get it out. Yeah, which if he blitzes a gap, there's nobody on F. They right. ran out of human beings or wise open. One of the two are open, okay? For sure. Let me tell you a little nugget of information on this. If you get this front, call wise stick. They'll get out mm. of it. Okay. <laughs> they'll, they'll get out of it if you keep running. The Y stick kills this formation. Yeah. All right. So, um, air raid quick game. Oldies but goodies. Okay. I come from the old school air raid. So, the numbers that I use are the things that Leach and Mummy still use today. So, when we talk about 66, we're talking about hitch seam. We talk about 617, that's fade out to the uh, left. 619 is fade out to the right. 618 is Y stick. If we said 618H, it'd be H stick. And then 8 is Y corner. And then 8H is H corner. Okay, so we like I told you, we only have four quick game concepts. And you use the numbering system, or not system, but you use the numbers to call the plays, literally? Yes, sir. Yeah, I do, okay. I do the numbers. Right. I got to do better. I got to get better about that. The way I've been teaching it is the literal concept words and that's what i that's what i use but i got i need to get better at that because i think it would be probably quicker to call it with the number in the game yeah i i like the numbers because the numbers also tell the o-line what pass pro what type of mm. is that to take um i know like uh, I, i'm not a tony franklin guy but his numbers are a little different uh, noel mazzoni's numbers are different i know noel's used words before i just think you gotta have something that your kids buy into but the yeah. numbers, the numbers are, that's a whole other story for another Yeah, day. yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's classic air raid, right? So uh, yeah, just to let everyone air. know out there, if, if you've only seen my stuff, which I hope you haven't, I hope you've been looking at, at Coach Knapps and Mackey and Colt Tharp and, and Salas, but um, the majority of them do use the numbering system. I just have not got that advanced yet. So for all you guys out there, um, just to let you know, precursor to what I'm doing, it most of these guys grew up on the numbers and, and have it and call it that way. Yeah. And, and you know what, coach, I think you make a good point there. Uh, guys, like you said, Cole Tharp, Salas, uh, me, Drew Piscopo, uh, Dular, even Mackey, we all, we learned it that way. You know, we, we remember the, the, the Tim couch at UK and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Uh, Graham Harrell right here with coach Leach, you know, so that's how we learned it. But, you know, just pick a system that works for you. The main right. thing is, like I said, the concepts have to stay the same. <laughs> Yep. It'll, it'll get crazy quick. Uh, so here's here's how the quick game protects each other, okay? Um, 66, which is hitches, and fade out, they attack one high safety structures and the corner depth, 
Okay, so if, if my this is how I teach it to the quarterback. Okay, and I got this as my third point, but I want to say this first. And I think this is what separates Coach Mike Leach from everybody. Okay, he puts it in the quarterback's brain first, mm. then he puts it on his wristband second. Okay, so that quarterback knows we only got four concepts. So he knows when I see a defense, I know what Coach Knapp or Coach Leach or Coach whoever wants me to run. I know what to call to attack. That's how you give your quarterback freedom to check down in middle school. This is how I gave Dalton my middle school quarterback freedom. Okay. He made me look really smart a lot. Uh, <laughs> Coach Leach has a has a saying that, you know, play calls are really just last minute suggestions to the quarterback. Because at the end of the time, he's got to he's got to run the play. You know, he's the one that decides awesome. who gets the ball. So you know you got to make sure you're you're getting it to your dude. Um, so like I said, hitches and fade outs, one high safety, middle to field close, however you want to call it, that's what we're going to. That's in our play menu. Uh, Six eighteen and eight, which is Y stick and Y corner, they they protect each other, and they're two high safety structure beaters. Okay, and you would change which one you would use on that, not on the corner depth, but on the safety depth. Hmm. Okay, so, so they already knows coming into it. If I get one high. This is what Coach Knapp wants me to call. If I'm getting too high and calling quick game, this is what Coach Knapp wants me to do. Love it. You got that? Okay. Sorry about that. My phone's ringing. Let me turn that off real quick. My wife's checking in on me, I guess. <laughs> okay, I'm back. All right, so uh, ACE, AC stands for ACE. That'd be a two-by-two two formation. Uh, 66. So I came up, and on the quarterback's wristband, it may look like this. Okay, now I don't, I don't do it this way now in high school. But when I was at middle school, I wouldn't do it any other way. Okay, so I would say, you know, wristband one, for example. If I wanted him, if I saw they had one high safety, I, I would call this play. And he knew that you know, we were seeing one high safety. I'm either calling hitch, 66, 617, 619, which is fade out, or a run. Okay, so if he came up and these corners were way off, like they are right here at 15 to 10 yards, there's no, it doesn't do me any good to put this X or Z on a go route. OK, so he needs to throw a hitch. So he would give them the signal for 66, which is hitches. OK, so that's just, you know, grip it, rip it and throw it. Throw a five yard, five yard hitch. I teach my routes off steps. So this would be a three step hitch. And then, of course, you've got you guys running seam reads. The easiest way to teach him how to run seam reads, outside release, high arm, low arm when he tries to put his hands on you. Try to stack him on top. And I tell him, use the open track rule. OK. So if there's a safety sitting on the hash, you need to set it down. If not, keep running. So it gets mm -hmm. one high, nine times out of ten, they're going to keep running. And the quarterback would make this outside linebacker wrong. Okay? Now, I get this question a lot. How do you determine what side to throw to? Teach your quarterback grass. If this corner's playing off at 15 and this one's playing off at 12 or 10, I need to throw to this left-hand side. Okay, because he's got more grass to run with that hitch. Right. Okay. If everything is equal, they're both at 15. You know, and this is Deion Sanders out here over top of the Z. <laughs> and you got me out here at corner. You need to attack me. Okay. <laughs> you need, I don't go after Deion. Go after me. Right. You know, Deion's an NFL player. Coach Nat barely made it out of high school. Right. So make sure that you're finding that weak sister and you're attacking them. All right. How does the quarterback decide to throw the hitch or the same read? He attacks the wheel. And in practice, this would be me. I would play the wheel right here, okay? So if I buzz out here to take away the hitch, I know I'm throwing that seam read on the go. We got film of it too, Coach, okay? And awesome. if not, if he, you know, if he tries to run vertical with this seam read, uh, then I'm going to throw this hitch route. It's grip and rip. If something goes crazy, he falls down, uh, the wheel tackles my – just something nuts – Never feel afraid to throw it down to the back, okay? Because you throw so much at this Sam and this Mike, they're going to fly out of there nine times out of ten, and you got your little check down. What I tell them is, if you can't, if you feel like he's covered, throw it at his feet, right? Live another down. Sure. So you're going to throw this a bunch against one high, and, and coach, you're, you you've coached for a while. What are you going to tell your corners to do if I keep completing it to the X or Z? You're going to tell them to do what? Yeah, come up. Come up, right? So I've got a plan for that. So now the corners have walked up. If not, I'm going back to air raid rule number one. Throw the ball short to people who can score. That's my X and my Z at this point. All day. All, right. All day long. Corners have walked up. I got to go to plan number two. Okay, 617, 619. I got 617s to the left. So my quarterback here, I've called that play. 
He's checked it to 617, which is, you know, the fade out to the left. All right. Like I said, I got double slants on the right over here. If he likes double slants, he can take it because for whatever reason, his defense is having a hard time guarding double slants. But if not, now the corner has walked down. I got to attack his depth. So now I'm going fade to out. And I, instead of reading this wheel now, I'm reading the corner. Okay. If my X beats this corner, I'm throwing the go route. Now, that's not a Hail Mary 55-yard pass, okay? That is at most a 20-yard throw, 25 if you're lucky with the quarterback, and middle school was 20, okay, with everything he had. Yep. But then you got your fade out here, okay? So you got a three-step, round it out. I tell them on this out route to put their ear on their shoulder like they're listening to this, their shoulder pad. That way it turns them because if you run a speed cut out, they're gonna, the wheel's going to jump it. It's going to kill your guy. Round that out and catch the ball and score so in practice, I'm playing the corner. You know, I'm simulating this to the quarterback. I'm either coming down and taking away the H, all right, and he's throwing the go route, or I'm bailing as fast as I can, and he's throwing the out. Those are easy completions, okay? The key points to this out route is it's just like pat and go. Don't align out here by the sidelines. We don't have Dan Marino, okay? Cheat in as much as you can. You can only run your go route on top of the numbers, all right? So stacking, if he throws you over here, you can run in there and catch it. That is the quarterback's property. We cannot trespass on his property. We have to be invited into this area. So he can throw us the go route from there, okay? You're just working pat and go drill. Uh, and then, like I said, guys, you got your check down here. So those are two of our four quick games. Now, people say you got run up there, okay? We got run out there right now. Um why do you have run? Well, what they're going to do is they're going to start vacating this this mic out, this Sam out, this this safety's going to start dropping, this wheel's going to start dropping. They're going to give me a five man box. So as you know, my running back, we can check the run, which could be dart, inside zone, counter, trap. I don't care what it is. We got a five man box for our running. So those are the three step processes for that. Awesome. Okay. Now we're going to the two high coach. Okay, so this is six eighteen or eight. This is Y stick, Y corner. All right, and I was getting a lot of questions on Twitter about this. All right, so you could, it could be a 5-1 five, five box. We talked about that, but let's say they're in that 4-1. A lot of people will say, Coach, you could run the ball here, and they're absolutely right. We can, all right, but if we want to throw on it, right, we want to throw on it, we got to check to 618 and 8 because sometimes this Sam will come in here and sometimes this Will will come in here like a 4-3, like a right, Coach? Mm -hmm. Yep. And this Will will walk out and he'll walk out. So these are the two plays I'm wanting to run against that – Seven man, two high box, six eighteen eight. Okay, so six eighteen is why stick. If I want to run to the left, it'd be six eighteen H, which is a whole different story. Okay, but my court, my running backs on that free release shoot route that we talked about. Why? Because I want him to put the Sam in conflict immediately. Yep. Okay, so he's gonna catch the snap. I'm making the Sam wrong. That would be me in practice. I'm gonna pre-snap this go. Same rules that we used on six seventeen, six nineteen. You know, outside release. I've got – here's the difference on 618 and the other two. When you run that go route, you have to make the corner turn his head away from this F or you will get him killed. Right. I, I'm from Appalachia, guys. We like to fish. I know, you know, everybody likes to fish. And when I tell them to use the fish hook technique, okay, when you got a fish on the hook, you pull it. Once that fish is – it yanks it, Right. So I tell him, fish hook him. I want his head to whoop, to hook. I don't care if you got to hook him with your arm. You got to turn that corner's head around, okay? So he doesn't kill this out route. Now, once that corner's head's turned, uh, you go from the Sam. If the Sam would fly out here on the running back, you throw to the Y, okay? If the Sam just sets still, what you get in middle school a lot, they sometimes they, they're not used to guarding passing defenses. They just stay in there. Yeah. You're going to throw it to the running back, who's one of your best players, out here on a flat, okay? Now, people will say, what if they're in cover two, right, and this corner sets? Well, then you just need to throw a hole shot right here to the go route, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's an easy – that's real simple. We work that in practice all the time. Uh, the only guy that can take away both of it is if the corner would set, the strong safety would fly over the go route, the Sam would set still, okay? Like I said, the, Sam, the Sam's coming here, the corner's dropping back, all this. they got three over two here, three on three, and the mic – tries to fly out and take away the Y, okay? Well, if they do that, we need to either A, run the ball, yeah. okay? Or, because that means you're pretty much going against a four-man box, or you got this backside slant. Look at all this space in here, 
right? So, you know, you can tell him, hey, some some guys teach it this way. You can tell him to go stick, to shoot, to slant, mm-hmm. however you want to do it. My middle school quarterback, he just got it. He just knew when to throw it because he would look out here and look at all this grass, and he would just peg it in there, right? Uh, so you got different ways to do it, but that's 618. Now, what are they going to do when you do that? They're going to start walking the safety, the strong safety down because they're tired of you completing this, okay? So you need to check the eight. Eight is a great, great, great red zone play. They cannot guard 92 mesh and eight at the same time unless they're just better than you and you're going to lose anyways, okay? They're just that much better, you're done. So make sure you guys are running this play in the red zone, okay? And how to practice this play, we'll talk about it in a second. But Okay, so his first read. It's the Y. It's going to be a uh, – let's see here. You got your outside foot. Uh, your outside foot is up, okay? So you got that up. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five on the Y. You stick it. I tell them to listen to their ear pad, their inside ear pad on the sand to try to bend him inside, stick and separate, and you're going to break to that back pylon. Now, if you're not running in the red zone, you tell them to basically just run a cell route. Okay, that way they come flat and you can throw it because if not, that sand, that strong safety will come on the top of you. Mm-hmm. Right, but, so you got your first read there. Your second read, you can do it one of two ways. I like reading the F because I think it makes this guy move more because you're looking at him and you're kind of going from here to here to here. It's kind of like a triangle. Uh, but some people go from, the you know, to the snag, to the shoot. It's, it's whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. Okay, but so you go one to two to three. And the only if you know the same kind of concept is if the mic flies out here, you could throw that backside slant or you could run the ball. It doesn't matter. Um, but you got your different options here. Why would he check the eight? The strong safety's walking down. Okay. So now the stick's not very good because they've got two guys down here that can take away the stick and the shoot. So now we need to go vertical or go deep with their Y. So that and if like I said, you get a five man box, you can always check run. But this stuff just seems to work out the best. Okay. So as of right now, coach, we got any. We got any questions or anything? Uh, I have a ton of questions, but I'm gonna leave that alone right now. I'm gonna let you keep <laughs> let you keep rolling because I'm just like so enthralled with this stuff. Okay, I mean, so I got I got some film. Okay. Yeah, good. Uh, Let's go. Okay, so this is from me. Um, tell me, can you guys see that? Yep, I'm gonna blow it up okay. a little bit more for him. Okay, I'm gonna pause it real fast. Uh, this is when I was at South Point High School in 2013. Um, really good quarterback right here at Gage Townsend. Had a pretty good receiving core. Uh, this team was one and nine the year we took them over, and they ended up going seven and three with them. Uh, which you know, I give I give credit all to the kids on this. Uh, but we we let Gage do the same thing. So you know, he sees this cushion out here by this guy. See how this guy's this guy's not much, but he's still a little shorter. Yep. Okay, and plus this is our best player right here. All right, so we're going to run sixty six, which is hitches. Gage comes up, checks the play, gave him the signal, and uh, as you can tell, he's got the cushion here from the corner. It's just grip it, rip it, boom, tight turn. It's a 10-yard game. Love it. Five-yard pass, okay, three easy, steps. Okay? Easy money, baby. Easy money, okay. So now let's go to the next play here. We should have another 66 play. Okay, now, all right, Gage called this play. We're in two backs, all right. So, Coach, I don't run 10 personnel all the time. I can't run your quick game. Yes, you can. I did it out two backs most of this year, okay. Um, same thing. This corner's playing off. Gage saw this safety constantly. We kept throwing the hitch because look how far off this guy is. Okay, yeah. Gage saw. He checked this play. I had mesh called. <laughs> he, che- he checked the hitches on this. They're in one high. He saw this safety keep flying down and try to tackle this hitch. Watch him hit this seam read. Okay, so we hit play. Gage has checked the play. I'm saying no, 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 no. The seam read comes open. <laughs> Boom. Makes me look like a genius. I love it. Okay, that's how easy it is. The O line barely had to protect anybody. So that's the seam read. Now we got our man Mike Leach at Washington State. This is 617, 619. This is the fade out. I'm assuming the quarterback saw the cushion down here. He throws the out, tight turn. Okay, getting out of the end zone. Very good there. Uh, this is me running it at South Point again. Okay, this team right here waxed them the year before. And we were able to beat them at their homecoming. I always love beating people in their homecoming. Absolutely. Uh oh, what happened there? Check, check me out of there. Hold on. Let's see here. What did it do? I'm sorry. Here it is. Okay. So we beat them on their homecoming. Gage, we called six. We called 66, 617, 619. He likes the the cushion. Now that corner's playing down. 
We stack him. We're running on top of the numbers. He fades us out. Pat and go. Touchdown. Boom. Okay, we, we made that corner wrong. So you're seeing it in action. All right. Um, we've got another one here. This is us at South Point. Uh, my starting receiver got hurt, so we had to put a sub in. So that's why he's cheated in so much on this hash. Same thing. He would beat the corner, throw the go route, touchdown, just fade out. Okay, looking up, not back. That's why pat and go is so important. Now, my man, Drew Piscopo, is the air raid guru. Okay, if you don't follow Drew Piscopo on Twitter, you need to. All right, he's at Ash County. I joke with him. I tell him I'm the Ash County president of West Virginia chapter because uh, I'm a big fan of his. <laughs> he does a great job teaching his receivers and stuff. He's amazing. This is a 618, maybe. Let me go back try to play it. So we got 618 here. All right, why stick? Throws the stick, tight turn, get up field, turn a little gain into a big gain, right? And guys, notice the O-line doesn't have to block very long on this. Nothing. All right. We've got another clip of it here. We're going 618 here. We're going to see who guards the Y. Quarterback probably checked to it there. He takes the Y. We throw to the back. Gain of five or six. If we're running ISO and we're gaining five or six yards, everybody's happy, right? So let's do the same thing. Let's do the same things on these plays. So the stick's open, tight turn, score. Okay. So good stuff there by Drew. We're going to go to Drew again. This is eight. So these safeties, they feel like they've walked down some. They feel like they can really throw this corner out. They're doing it out of two backs. One, two, three, four, five, stick. Boom. There he stuck it. Throw it like a sail route. You see that, Coach, how he came flat? Yes, sir. That's why you do teach him to do it that way. Now, Drew's got some on here where they go to the corner. Okay, Drew's giving me permission to use these fans, so it's not like I'm stealing here. <laughs> uh, so here's another one. He's going to go one, two, three, four, five, and stick. One, two, three, four, five, stick. It's not there. Boom. Throw it. Come flat like you do on sale. Big game. All right. All you're doing is just high low in that guy pretty much. Uh, here's one in the red zone. He's working to the back corner now, if you see. Throw it. Touchdown. So you much guys, grass. So much grass. Holy so cow. Much, so much grass, man. So, guys, that 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 is the quick game on film. Uh, Coach, I'm going to exit off of this and come back to you. That's all right. There we go. Yes, sir. Um, so Man. you guys saw some film on it. We have the Coach Tube film. It's through 92 Mesh Group. You have Drew on there talking. I'm on there. Coach Coltharp, Joe South. Honestly, it was one of the most fun things I ever did, just hearing all those guys talk. Uh, there are a lot more details in, in into the film on that, on the Coach Tube, but you kind of get a glimpse of it on what we're doing with the quick game. 100%, coaches. And I'm going to – again, I'm going to put those links in the in – the, in the uh, summary below so you guys can go check it out i mean he gave us coach knapp was nice enough to come in here and, and break it all down for us um there are like you said there's other coaches on that on that film that are giving great tidbits um as well you know you heard coach knapp talk a lot about you know how his receivers are playing as he was talking um his wide receiver video gives a million little golden nuggets that i you know that i just love i'm going to start taking the the knife and start, uh, you know, doing your knife drill as far as ripping down on, on the defenders and, and having that space from the numbers to the sideline. That's the, that's the quarterback's territory. I, I mean, there's so many great nuggets. So I'm going to put all that in the chat below. Um, but, you know, I did want to bring you in today so people can see systematically. At, I mean, you're, I didn't realize until today that quarterback was seventh grade. I mean, I had an eighth grade quarterback last year who I wish I would have done this with. Uh, I am going down purposefully to seventh grade this year to prove that I can do it at that level as well. So I'm excited about this uh, for his level. So you can systematically, coaches, get your team on the field, go into camp, and as seventh grade for sure, it's been proven. Can we do it at sixth grade? Maybe so. Yeah, I think so. But either way, coaches, you can systematically install two ways to call one play and let your quarterback – a young quarterback check to down to another play or check to a run and it's all in his wristband. Then the next time you call the other one and you can check down through it. So um, this is a systematic way to do it, guys. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's proven. My quarterback didn't throw for 2000 yards last year. I mean, I think it was 16, 1600. So uh, it, this is a proven way to do it guys. So I just want to make sure you all out there knew about this before, you know, right now we're all in game planning mode, right? Our we're planning our season, 
planning our camps. We are going to play this year. Um, so I just want to get this out to you guys. So coach Knapp, thank you so much for, for, for breaking this down for us today. I think this is going to be so helpful. Thanks for having me, brother. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Okay. Awesome. Anything else, um, you have in your mind coach before we, before we, uh, get out of here? Yeah. Just two things real quick, guys. Uh, coach said I did this at middle school. I absolutely did. You can do it at youth level. Uh, my middle school team only, it had right around 20 kids on it. Okay. So you can do it with as few amount of kids as you can. Obviously, the coaches have – we had to simulate a lot of stuff in practice, uh, but you can do it that way. And then last thing, guys, just be safe and enjoy time with your family during the pandemic. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again, Coach Knapp. I will – everyone go check out all his content. He has some great stuff out there. Um, stay safe, and let's continue to spread the ball around and help these participation numbers come back up. Talk to you soon, coaches.